this is not on the notes, so it's going so to throw our uh, media person off. But if you bring up Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And, and, and Dr. Martin, as, as I was worshiping this morning, and, and I guess really as the spirit kind of hit me, yes. I, I prepared this message, but then I, I got this just overwhelming anointing overwhelming power yes. what God has called us to do. Amen. Let's move your mic closer and pull it down, son. Yeah, bring it down. Bring it down, son. Uh -huh. Is that better? Yes. Okay, yes. can you hear me better now? Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. All right, there we go. Amen. All right. I, I, I got this, this, this overwhelming uh, sense of what God has called us to do. Yes. And, and, and it might, I have to say, it might be connected to, you know, my son was here for a week over Thanksgiving, and, and we, had a, we had one night where we just sit down and just talked about, you know, raising a boy. Uh, it was just me and him, uh, and, and we lived the bachelor life, and he was like, oh, yeah, he was a difficult child. You know, he, I call him a single parent child. Because if me and his mother would have been together, we still wouldn't need another parent for him. He needed his own parent. <laughs> so, 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 so we spent the night kind of talking about that and, and, and what a parent does and, and, and how I poured into him and, and how he perceived that. He didn't always perceive it the way I intended it to, but the results of there are what it caused, it, what, what it caused in his life. And it reminded me of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 says, it talks about, talk about Jesus. Says, now, now, he gave, he being Jesus, gave these, and now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, and the pastors yes. and teachers. Now, the pastor in the King James uh, pastors would be shepherds. Shepherds are like parents, really. You really care for a flock. You, you really pour your heart into them growing up, into everything that God has called them to be. Because later on it says, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Yes. So I'm just feeling this Father anointing right Amen. Go with the spirit. And and maybe it has to do with, with, with the promotion to, to, to father other pastors. Uh, it has to do with my connection with, with you individually as church members. I just need to spend maybe a couple of weeks, particularly today, just kind of talking to you as a father would talk to his children. Amen. As, as, as your pastor given to you by Jesus Christ. Jesus is always the head, so don't look at me. He works through me, but he's always the head. Amen. But the scripture says that he gave me and Dr. Meyer to be pastors and teachers, to show you how to live your life according to God's plan Amen. and to get his best out of you. Amen. So I'm going to spend the next week or two just kind of talking about that. And I'm really thinking about 2024 because we're about to turn over into a new year. Now, many people would say 2024 will be a turbulent year because it's the year of an election. And often elections cause confusion and, and strife. But God told me that 2024 is a year of opportunity for you and for me. So as we begin to go into 2024, I, I, I want to ask you some questions that I would also really ask my son or my, my daughter or anybody I loved as we just kind of talked about where are you in life? Where are you and what God called you to do? So as you think about 2024, I want you to ask yourself some questions. Ask yourself, who am I? 
Yes. Who am I? Just ask yourself. I mean, you don't have to answer it now, but, but, but this week, just, just think about who am I really? Who am I? Who am I? Why am I alive today? Why am I living? Why has God given me life? What are the dreams, the desires, the ambitions I have for my life? Ask yourself, as we begin to turn the clock, what are the dreams, ambitions, goals that I have for my life. And then go to the mirror, look at yourself in the mirror and say, and ask yourself, am I pleased with my process, with my progress towards those goals, visions, and dreams? You hear me? This is a conversation I would have with my, with my daughter if, if she was here. The kind of conversation I have with my son. As, as, as a father, as a leader, as you prepare to go into a, a new year. Who are you? What does your life mean? What are your dreams and what are your goals? What do, you, what do you really want to do? And then look in the mirror and say, if it was me, I'd say, Herman, let's evaluate. Am I pleased with my progress towards my goal and my vision? Now, some of you might say, you might be able to do that, and you might not even know what your dreams are. And as Dr. Myra and I, as, as we began to, to make this transition into our next phase in life, uh, we got to a place where we were kind of stuck at what is God's next call for us? What is God going to do for us next? And I was reminded of what, what Dr. Miles Monroe said in one of his books. He says that the poorest person in the world is a person without a dream. When we didn't know where our next step was going to be, what our next season was going to be, it was debilitating. I, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot, but can, can you just talk about how you felt not knowing where our next step was going to be? Amen. Like you said, it was debilitating, not knowing, especially when you have done certain things for so many years, you have served in different ministries for so many years, you have worked uh, to build a business for so many years. Now, what's next? See, because you live your life in cycles. At, at when, when, when you're young, you, maybe you just want to get out of college or school. But when you get in your 20s and 30s, maybe you just want to get a job. But then when you get older, you want to do this. And, and, and every time, it's kind of like turning a page. Because you can't, you're not, in, you're not in high school anymore. You're out of high school. So now, this is a new blank page. And if you don't have something on the page for this season, life is hard. You poor. And now, I'm in my 70s, but I'm turning the page. My wife is turning the page. And then when we wasn't sure what the dream should be, if the, when the page was empty, life was frustrating. Miles Monroe says, the most frustrated person in the world is a person with a dream with no way of carrying out that dream. No way of fulfilling that dream. So, I not only need the page to get full, I need some way of bringing the dream to pass. Wow. 
So as I have been thinking about 2024, and uh, I know I'm, I'm, I'm stepping on Pastor Donise because she gets to teach at the end of the year and the way the spirit works. Uh, when I, when he, God's telling me, he's telling her, so I'm teaching her lessons before she gets a chance to teach it. So every time I teach one of my lessons, she got to go back and change her lesson. <laughs> but, but, but God has declared to me that 2024 should be the year of dream manifestation. 2024 should be the year of dream manifestation. Come on, say amen. Amen. Say dream. Dream. Manifestation. Manifestation. Now, right now, I'm not talking to a corporate body. I'm not talking to everybody. I'm talking to you individually. I'm talking about your life, your dreams, your plans. Often at the end of the year, but sometimes I, I get I get a plan for the for the church. God gives me a vision, a corporate vision for the church. Mm -hmm. But this is not a corporate vision for the church. This is an individual call. What have you been wishing for? Mm -hmm. Or have you just been on a roller coaster or on a bicycle with wishing for nothing? living day in and day out with no plan for tomorrow. Hmm. Just from day to day, not knowing what God has for you tomorrow. What are the desires of your heart? If God himself sets you down and says, what would you like Amen. for your life to be? Yes. Do you have an answer for him? You'd be surprised how many people don't. What is your next level? What does your comeback look like? As we go into 2024, which much of the world might be in turmoil, I want us to be focused on manifesting God's best for our lives. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Because you got to have a dream. Uh, Myra and I, when, when, we were, when we were turning the page and the page was blank to us, we knew we was in trouble. We, uh, we, we need to do something about this. So we, we took weekends, we took weekend away, went to uh, what we call a staycation. Mm -hmm. Took a weekend away just to talk, just to think through. Okay, God, fill in the page. We what's talk, next? What's next? We talk to other people. Because uh, we know that we cannot live life. I don't care what age you are. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. You cannot live life without a dream. Without a goal. Without a plan. Without something that God has called you. To do. Amen. Are, is everybody understanding me? Yes. Now, let me be. You know, you know. I like definitions. I don't like people to guess on what I'm thinking. Everybody, every, every, what I'm saying, because everybody comes from a different background. You, they hear you say something, they get their own definition for it. So I give people definitions so that you know this is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So when I say dream, here's what I'm talking about. When I, the, the word dream could have many, many meanings. Mm. It could refer to a, a mental image that a person experiences during sleep. You know, you sleep and you have a dream. That could be a dream. It could also refer to a person's ambitions, goals, uh, plans for their life. It could also refer to a fantasy, something that you want to happen that will never happen. When you look at the Bible, it uses the word sometimes dream and vision interchangeably. Yes. So 
in the Bible, in the scriptures, the, the dreams have really several meanings, but primarily full. And, 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 and pay attention to me. I know, you know, uh, I didn't say how did our visitors, I didn't say how did our visitors when I came in, but how did our visitors? Yes. Uh, I know, uh, I can't holler or hoop or scream or none of that. All I can do is just give you what's in my heart. Yes, teach you. I can just teach you what's in, what's in my heart. We give plain instruction for victorious living. Amen. So if, um, if I'm not lively enough for you, I apologize. <laughs> I, I mean, I apologize, man. I, you know, I'm just, I, you know. <laughs> All, right. All right, so in the Bible, the, 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 as I said, dreams are really, there's four primary reasons for dreams. And you could say dreams and visions, but mostly dreams. Uh, the first one is that God often used dreams to give instruction. Amen. So, Dr. Meyer, would, would you go to Matthew chapter 1? Uh, well, I'm going to verse 20. 20 yes. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. Now, to put it in, text, in context, this is after uh, Gabriel has came to Mary and told Mary she was going to have Jesus. Um, at the time, Mary was engaged. Now, the angel, the, the angel has come to her and said, you're going to be pregnant with a baby. But she got a man. A, a fiancé probably would be better, right? Okay. Okay. She got a fiancé. And so what's going to happen when the fiancé finds out that, hey, my lady is pregnant, and he knows it's not him. So then God sends an angel to him. So, so, so Joseph is like, man, I don't know how I deal with this. So now, my, would you pick it up at verse 20? As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. So, so in, in this part, the angel comes to him in a dream and gives him instructions. It says that, okay, here's the situation, here's what you should do. Don't, don't trip, it's okay, go ahead and marry her. So there the dream gives instructions. Mm -hmm. Another thing a dream might do is it might reveal to you something that is going to happen. Yes. Or something that, that's about to happen. It, it might give you a revelation of a future event. Uh, and, and I'll use Joseph to do this. Joseph of the 12 brothers. You know, his brother threw him in the pit. He wound up in Pharaoh's uh, prison. Then Pharaoh's having these dreams. Yes. And Pharaoh's having these dreams, and he bring all of his people together. Uh, nobody can interpret the dreams. He don't know what's going on. So somebody tells Pharaoh that, hey, there's a, there's a guy in the prison. His name is Joseph, and he's pretty good at interpreting dreams. So why don't you get him and let him tell you what the dream's about? Yes. So pick it up by in uh, Genesis chapter 41, verse 25. Joseph responded, both of Pharaoh's dreams means the same thing. God is telling Pharaoh in advance what he is about to do. The seven good cows and the seven healthy heads of grain both represent seven years of prosperity. So uh, you know the story that God, God tells them that it's going to be seven years of plenty, seven years of, uh, of famine, because Joseph read the dream. God tells him what's going to happen, and Joseph becomes a, a one of the rulers, and they store up. And so that instruction, uh, that knowledge of what's going to happen really saved most of Egypt and saved Joseph's family. Yes. So, so that dream gave them, told them what was about to happen. Okay. Another thing that dreams might do in the Bible, or the thing that dreams do in the Bible, is a dream tells you about current events, something that's mm. happening right now. Mm. Now, what I'd like to use for this is Peter. Peter was at uh, his friend's house visiting, and he got hungry. And he goes up on the roof 
because uh, he's waiting for a meal. But then the Bible says while he's up there, he falls into uh, a dream state, says he falls asleep. And then while he's asleep, he has a vision. And in this vision that, that, that Peter has, uh, the sheet comes down. And in this sheet, there's all kinds of food that Peter would consider for a Jew to be unclean. And so this happens three times. So now would you pick it up in verse Acts 15. 19, 15. Amen. But the voice spoke again, do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. The same vision was represented or repeated three times. Then the sheet was suddenly pulled up to heaven. Now, so then he has this dream. Uh, it tells him that don't call unclean what God has called clean. Then immediately after he has the dream, what has already started to happen in the earth realm manifests itself in his life. Go to yes. verse 19. Meanwhile, as Peter was puzzling over the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, three men have come looking for you. Get up. Get up, go downstairs, and go with them without hesitation. Don't worry, for I have sent them. Now, now it turns out that the three men were, the men were Gentiles. Hmm. And Peter uh, really only dealt with the Jews, because the Gentiles were unclean. And God, God had already sent the men, Cornelius had sent the men to Peter. Peter didn't know that they was coming, but God used the vision or the dream to get him prepared to say, this is what's happening, and this is what you ought to do. Yes. Er everybody following me? Yes. All right, so, so, all right, let's go back again. Dreams might give you instructions. Might tell you what to do in the Bible. Uh, dreams might tell you what's going to happen. Dreams might tell you something about current events. Now here's the one where I want to focus on. Dreams often tell you God's assignment for your life. What God wants you to do. Amen. Now, let's look at Jeremiah for that. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. The Lord gave me this message. Now, it, it doesn't say there that it was a dream or a vision. But it indicates that God didn't speak to him directly, but that he saw or got the, the, the vision. So, so, pastor's adding that he got this through a dream or a vision. It wasn't the direct voice of God. All right, go on, Dr. Meyer. Amen. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. So in this dream, God tells Jeremiah, your life has a purpose. Amen. I made you for a purpose. Amen. And that's where I want to focus us as we prepare for 2024. That God has given you a dream, a goal, a desire that's born out of how he created you. Yes. That's born out of what he wants you to do. You aren't living by accident. Amen. At this moment, at this time, there is something in the world that only you can do. There's a purpose. And well, God yeah. brought you here at this time, Amen. at this place, Amen. to For carry out. Such a time as this. Amen. Just a time as this. Amen. And while how you create it never changes, where the focus of the call for your life uh, modifies or changes over time. 
So while at a time, Pastor Dr. Myra and I, we were focused on just pastoring to individuals. But then God turned the page. And for us, for a while, the page was blank. And we were struggling with God. God filling the page. We didn't know what was going to be on the page. But we knew that he had created our lives, he had used our lives, that we had purpose. And then he filled in the page. Amen. Now I want you to take what I have put in you, and I want you to take it to a higher level. So not only did he move us to a, nat a national stage, which you all know that, uh, but then he said, I want you to pour what I have poured into you into other leaders. Amen. And I know it's God because he opened up the door and he said, this is the door I want you to go through. So now the, the vision, the page becomes clear. Amen. And now we have dreams and, and, and goals and vision for what we as other churches and other leaders can do together. Amen. And we're so excited about this next phase of our lives. Amen. Next chapter. What are you excited about? Amen. As you go into 2024. What are you looking forward to? Are you going to just keep on doing the same old thing? Keep on getting the same old results? Just going day by day by day? 2024 is the year of dream manifestation. Amen. Yes. Yes. So, for the rest of this message, and I think the next two that we do, maybe one or two. Okay. Okay. I, I know I've been talking a lot. <laughs> I don't always used to have you up here, so so I always so, you know so you, you, you help go me. Go ahead on. All right, all right. You're go doing on. good. I'm doing good. All right. You're doing good. All right. So for the next for the rest of this reason, this lesson, and the next two, when I say dream, this is what I'm talking about. When when I say dream, here's what I'm referring to. I'm referring to a mental, visual image that God has given you for the purpose of your life. A visual, uh, a mental image. I guess I, I could refer to a mental image as the seeds of destiny that God has planted in the soil of your imagination. Mm -hmm. Your destiny. I've been called to mentor children and, and see them uh, learn how to read and, and, and see them learn how to, to grow up. Uh, I've been called to, to, to help foster children. I've been called to help families in trouble. Uh, what has God planted in your heart that I've been, you feel I've been called to do? Now, hear me, when I say dream, I'm talking about this God-giving purpose. I'm talking about the seeds of destiny, what you think you could be and not, what you could do and have it, what's in you to produce that you haven't produced. Mm. Now, those two things, along with the journey to find the necessary knowledge and environment to bring the dream to pass. So you can't, you can't just have a dream. You can't have a seed of destiny, but not pursue the knowledge and the environment to bring the dream to pass. Everybody with me? Amen. 
Because what I don't want you to do is confuse a dream with a fantasy. Don't confuse a dream with a fantasy. See, a fantasy is a mental, a mental it's, it's still a mental manifestation, but it's a mental, mental manifestation of wishes and desires born out of selfishness. Mm -hmm. Not born out of who God wants me to be, but often what other people have that I want. Often what the TV has defined for me who I should be. Often what others say I should be. James 4 says, James 4, 3 says, you, have, uh, you ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend it in your pleasure. Or spend it on pleasure. So I'm not talking about that. See, a fantasy does not include a God-given purpose. God's not in it. A fantasy doesn't have a seed to produce it. Mm, give us an example of a fantasy. A fantasy is that I, got, I, I have a dream, let's say, I think. I got a dream to be a millionaire. But all I'm doing is paying a lottery. Playing a lot. That's a fantasy. This is a dream born out of selfishness. Not God given. Mm -hmm. And there is no pursuit of the knowledge or environment to bring the dream to pass. Mm. Okay. See. A dream is that I want, uh, uh, a fantasy is that I want to be an astronaut and fly to the moon. But you ain't go to college. You can't add two and two. And you're not trying. You're just going around telling people I'm going to be an astronaut. My fate going to make me an astronaut. Not like it. That's a fantasy. Got to do the work. Now you can't do all the work yourself. God's gonna get involved. Amen. Amen. But you got to do some of the work. Amen. I don't want my children living in a fantasy world. Because every day that you live is a day that you don't live again. All the time you waste on fantasy is time that God can't do with you what he's called you to do. Amen. I mean, you know, I, I probably should be doing more scriptures, but I'm, I'm fathering today. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm fathering today, all right? I'm fathering today. Y'all got me? Amen. I'm fathering today. So, yes, for 2024, as we prepare, you need to start dreaming. Now, now it, it doesn't matter where you are. It matters where you want to go. So, here's the thing. I want to get my note right. When a dream as I have defined a dream. When, when a dream, as I define a dream, mm -hmm. gets connected with the anointing of God, the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God, it produces a child called vision. Mm. Vision is something you can develop a plan a plan you can implement. See, so I want to dream. I want to connect my dream to the anointing, the power of God that he's placed in me, how he's made me. 
Now I begin to, that, that produces a vision for my life. Now that I have a vision, I can, God in me can develop a plan to bring the vision to pass. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. And vision is crucial. Mm. You got to have a vision for your life. And the vision is going to flow out of God's purpose for you. Now, I'm a, I, again, I got to use Dr. Myers. Do so I have your permission? Yes, sir. Everybody know Dr. Meyer. When she, she walk, if, if she go into the restaurant and we get ready to eat, she gonna tell everybody where to sit. Oh Lord! Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. She told everybody to sit. Amen. 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 Uh, that's that's just her. She got. I mean, she gonna take charge of some things. Yeah. And uh, for a while, especially last year, she was struggling with that because she like. Do I talk too much? Am I always telling people what to do? Am I getting on people's nerves? And she was struggling with that last year. This year. This year. This year. She was struggling with that. Mm -hmm. But then, that's how God made her. And I have never tried to stop her from being her. Plus, it don't work. <laughs> but then, when... Uh, the opportunity the pastor of the pastors came. The opportunity came that we need Dr. Myra's leadership and how she is made in this role. So it flowed, it flowed not out of what she had to become, but who she already was. But can I share uh, something when you was talking about, yes, I was struggling with, uh, you know, is this a bad thing that I'm doing? You know, why do I always have to, most of the time, depending on the environment, tell people where, you know, say, you gonna sit here, you gonna sit here, or whatever. And I was saying, well, maybe I need to cut back and not say as much, you know, just go, quote unquote, with the flow. And I was struggling with it so much that I was thinking about it all the time. But then I feel like God revealed to me that it was okay when we had a meeting here with other Foursquare churches and one of the pastor's wives shared how she went to this event not knowing, any, not knowing anyone and not knowing what to do. And the first person she saw was me and I said to her, come sit by me. Amen. And that let me know that it had an impact, a positive impact on somebody's life. And that was just the first time. Since that time, at least three other times, right? You have to remind the me. The African American people? Uh, the these, organization. These, the, these people that do uh, minister to African American leaders throughout the uh, country, mm -hmm. they said, hey, Dr. Myers. They wanted we, me to be a part you, of their group. Right. And then the the regional pastor. They said, like, hey, Dr. Meyer, there's a state. The there. area the pastor. The area pastor. Hey, Dr. Meyer, we though, need you. Though you're in front, they need my assistance. Just recently, just the other day, uh, they called, uh, is Dr. Meyer there? Because we need her to do something. So I'll only say that not, 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 not to build up Dr. Meyer, though I was building her up, to say that God has uniquely created you. Uniquely, yes. You are uniquely created. You have a gift inside of you. There's nothing wrong with you. God made you a certain way. And he has a purpose, uh, a place where your gift fits the way that you are. Amen. Everybody who keeps trying to change you is missing who God made you. If he took all of this time to make only one of you, there's only one of you. You are an endangered species. Once you're gone, there's no more you. Your fingerprints will never be duplicated. Amen. If he took all the time to make a unique you, stop trying to be somebody else. Amen. 
But you got to start trying to be the best you God made. Amen. Now you can't do that without turning your life over to Jesus Christ. Because the devil will try to make you something too. It's only under submission to the, to, to the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. So you give your life to Christ. Now how you created connects with an anointing. The anointing produces a vision. The vision, we can put together a plan. Then we can implement a plan. And you can see God do the amazing in your life. Amen. So what a vision will do for you, it'll stop you from doing stuff that you shouldn't do. There's a lot of good stuff to do, but you need to do what you've been called to do. So it'll help keep you in line. I mean, if you're traveling from here to California, there's a lot of places to visit. Mm -hmm. A lot of sightseeing along the way. But that's not where we're going. We're going to California. So we can't get sidetracked. Mm -hmm. it'll, help you, it'll help you give you direction. Mm -hmm. It'll help you evaluate, how am I doing towards who God called me to be? Amen. Amen. And listen, 2024 time is running out. Uh, go to Genesis chapter 1. I, I, I need to finish it. I'll go on and on. Genesis chapter 1, verse 14 says this. Beginning verse 14. Then God said, let great... Let, let, lights. let great lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them walk off the seasons, days, and years. Let these lights in the sky shine down on the earth. And, what, and that is what happened. God made two lights, the sun and the moon. The larger one governed the day and the smaller one governed the night. He also made the stars. God set these lights in the sky uh, to light the earth, to govern the days and the nights, and to separate the, the lights from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and the evening passed, and the morning came, walking the fourth day. Well, that's the day that God created time. Now the unique thing about time for you and I is that it passes. For God, there is no time. But for you and me, time passes. Every day that you miss carrying out God's plan for your life is a day that you don't have to carry out God's plan. Wow. Every day. You will never get back yesterday. Amen. You'll never get back today. If you wasted today not walking in God who God called you to be, it's wasted. Amen. And what you could have done tomorrow, you now can't do it. Because you wasted today. Amen. Uh, Ecclesiastes 14.4 in the New Living says this. If you wait for perfect conditions, you will never get anything done. Yeah. So if you're waiting for everything to line up before you start moving towards a dream, You'll never get there. Yep. If you're waiting for it to be perfect. You only need enough faith to start. Amen. You don't need the faith to finish. You need the faith to start. Yes. But you can't do any of that unless you ask yourself. Before you go into the year to come. Before 2024. Ask yourself, who am I? 
Are you pleased with who you are? Would you want a son or a daughter to be just like you? Do the people close to you and your spirit influence who know your heart celebrate who you are? Ask yourself, who am I? Why am I alive? Uh -huh. What does my life mean? Uh -huh. Is it just about me? Is it just about pleasure? Why am, why am I doing this day in and day out? Uh -huh. What does God really want for me? Uh -huh. And how can I bring it to pass? Spend this week in some reflection. Because you need a dream. We spent time with my son. And he got a dream. Dad, I need to be with you. He got a dream. Mm -hmm. Now that dream has turned into a vision. And he's put together a plan. Mm -hmm. God made you uniquely. And now it's time for dream manifestation. Amen. Amen? Amen. Come on, you got it? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for the word. We dedicate ourselves to be more than just hearers of the word. Amen. But to also be doers. If you've been joining us online, we want to thank you so much for being part of our service. God loves you, and we love you. Amen. Listen, you can't really start this journey unless you first give your life to Jesus Christ. Because the Bible tells us that we were once all carried away by our own desires, mm -hmm. serving the wrong master. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But once we make a decision that Jesus, you know what's best, then we begin a journey towards God's best for our life. Now he's already paid the price. He's already done all of the heavy lifting we might say. All you have to do is accept what he's done. Mm -hmm. You do that by just saying this short prayer, and you got to believe it in your heart. So if that's you, just say this, and you got to mean it. Amen. Say, Jesus, Jesus, come into my life. Come into my life. I turn from my past. I turn from my past. And I turn towards you. And I turn towards you. I believe. I believe. That you died on the cross. That you died on the cross. Just for me. Just for me. And on the third day. And on the third day. The power of God. The power of God. Raised you up. Raised you up. I accept you. I accept you. As my Lord. As my Lord. And as my Savior. And as my Savior. Now Jesus. Now Jesus. Take over my life. Take over my life. Guide me. Guide me and keep me and keep me in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you said that that prayer for the first time and you really mean it, mean it from your heart, God sent His Spirit into your spirit, crying out, "Abba, Father," and you actually are at this moment a new creation in God. Now, what you should do is get yourself into a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church where you might can be mentored where you might can learn to live out this Christian life. You will be able to recognize them by the love they demonstrate to one another. When you see that love that they demonstrate to each other and that they showed it to you, you know that you're in the right place to grow in Christ. Amen. If you have any Kansas City area, please come and visit us. We're located at 9301 East 87th Street in Raytown, Missouri. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you again next week at the same time. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For you here in the sanctuary.